Hey everybody, it's Steve Presser, Director of Adult Discipleship here at Mount Zion, and I'm welcoming you to our fourth and final lesson as we're looking at the perspectives of the promise, and today we're looking at pursue. You know, each of us have a unique story. We all have a unique story to tell, a testimony to share of how maybe we came to know Christ Um, Maybe there was a way that we went about discovering Christ, or maybe he was revealed to us by a trusted friend or a church or some other means. But we've all encountered Christ in some way if we're believers in him. And that encounter demands a response from us all. And how we respond to Christ often will dictate then to follow on people, people who come after us, whether we our friends, our family, co-workers, it will often dictate to them how they will see Christ. And so what I want to do today is, as we're looking at perspectives of the promise, is we're going to look at a handful of folks who encountered Jesus and look at how did they responded to that encounter. So the first one that we're going to look at is the shepherds. And we've touched on the shepherds in a couple of different ways throughout this study. But in Luke chapter 2, 8 through 20, we see that account of the shepherds. They're in the fields. They're watching their flocks by night. Suddenly, an angel appeared to them and told them to not fear. For this day in the city of David, a child is born, Christ the King. Now, it's interesting that the angel would say in the city of David, as opposed to the city of Bethlehem. And I think the reason why the angel chose that word so specifically that the city of David is because of all the kings of Israel, only David and Jesus are of that historical lineage of kings that came from Bethlehem. Not only that, but they would also know that everyone who was going to Bethlehem had family lineage to King David. Kind of an interesting um, little tidbit there. So the shepherds who are longing for the king to come, the Messiah, Christ, are told by this angel that that is where you're going to find him, in the city of David. And so, of course, they run with, in great haste, with great joy. The angel tells them that they will find the baby in, in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. That's exactly what they find. And as they find Christ there, what is the response? The response first is that they told all who were present at that scene, Mary, Joseph, maybe a few others, they told them all that happened in the fields. And then as they left the scene, they go and tell everyone that they know about Jesus. The scripture said they left glorifying and praising God. Now, another group of individuals is that of the wise men. And I am fascinated by the wise men and want to just maybe share with you a few things about them. Um, because I, I think a lot of us have a great interest in who these wise men are. And um, so I want to maybe just spend a little bit of time uh, just kind of focusing on who they were, what they did. Um, these wise men, we, we call them magi. They were originally maybe a priestly caste from the Persian area, the Babylonian area. There's a lot of speculation about who they are, what they did, how they came to know about Christ. Uh, But it's likely that these individuals were what we might call um, astrological um, or theological astronomers. Let me get it right. Theological astronomers. So they look to the stars. They think the stars can tell them something about events of the world or what's going on. But because of their interest um, in in this time frame, they, they may have also been very interested in theological things. If you remember, the Jews were brought as exiles into Babylon. And so a lot of the remnants of their culture, of their religion may have been left behind and picked up and studied along the way by these theological astronomers. And some refer back to Numbers 24, 17. And it reads, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob and a scepter out of Israel. They may have also been well aware of Daniel's vision of the son of man to come. Um, They may have been aware of Isaiah's prophecies foretelling of a virgin birth. Now, we don't know if that word would have gotten to them that Mary was pregnant, but 
We just don't know. Um, so it, make, it might make sense then that a caravan of scientific, theological, um, astronomical observers would travel some 800 miles to come see this baby Jesus. It might make some sense. Um, but their inquiry of this Christ child, of the king of the Jews, as we looked at last week, it sparks the interest of Herod. But they go and they see this baby Jesus. And the scriptures said that they found him in a house. Now that's interesting because a lot of the nativity scenes that you might see at Christmas time has the wise men as well as the shepherds and an angel on top and everybody's at the party. And that couldn't be further from the truth, <laughs> right? The angels visited the shepherds in the fields. The star fell above the town of Bethlehem that the wise men would have followed. And it, the scripture says they came into the house, not, not a, um, not a, not a manger scene or anything like that. So this would have been some time after Jesus was born. Furthermore, it gives credibility to why Herod would go and kill all the babies two years and younger, right? So there had to be some time passing and these wise men would have found them in the house. And what happened when they found the child? Well, when they found the child, they offered him gifts, right? So they offered him worship and moreover, they, they worshiped him through giving, And so those different gifts were of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is often said to be um, representative of um, him as a king. It was a gift of wealth representing his kingship. Uh, You also had the fact that he was um, uh, given a burial perfume of myrrh. And then also incense, which as you burn incense, that, that aroma rises to the heavens. And if you remember that great hymn of old, We Three Kings, there's a line in there, uh, glorious now, behold him arise, king, God, and sacrifice. And there's a lot of people who speculate on these gifts that they, in fact, represent those three uh, very things, kingship, uh, deity, and of course, his impending death to come. And so these wise men give these gifts and they respond in worship to Christ. The last one that I want to point to you is um, some stories that often get overlooked, and that is Simeon and Anna. And we find these two individuals um, toward the back end of the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, verse 22 through 38. And what happens here essentially is that there is two individuals. One is Simeon. Simeon is waiting for the consolation of Israel. He's a He's an older man, and it was promised to him by God through the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he saw the Lord's Christ. And sure enough, they bring Jesus to the temple to dedicate him. Simeon is able to not only lay eyes on Jesus, but hold Jesus, and has this incredible bit to say. He says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. What powerful words to be able to say in your your last days. And then it goes on to say, and his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. So Mary and Joseph are still just kind of taking all of this in about who this child Jesus really is. And so uh, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, quote, behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and and a sword will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. What an incredible prophecy. Uh, Again, words of life and truth and of encouragement uh, poured out over the life of Jesus given in front of Mary and Joseph to, to ponder. And then it continues on to talk about this prophetess named Anna. She uh, was in the temple for years and years. And when she finally gets a chance to see Jesus, How did she respond in her worship? 
It says here, and coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. So my question to you then is this, as we wrap up perspectives of the promise, we have all these various testimonies of wise men, of shepherds, of prophetesses, um, of Simeon. And my question for you is, what is your testimony? How have you encountered Christ over these last four weeks, maybe over these last number of years or decades? How have you encountered Christ and what has your response been? What has your response been just here lately in the last several days or weeks? And with that challenge, how will you respond now as we get so close to that Christmas day when we celebrate the advent of our Lord? And furthermore, we continue to look forward to that day when we know he will come again at that second advent. And I know for me, I am looking forward to that day with great anticipation. And I hope you are too. And I hope that this Advent study has helped you to gain some perspective as you reflect on Christ this season. May God bless you and your family. Take care. Oh.